Hello friends, welcome to Cloud Tech. So we bring on one more video on Java interview questions. So in this video, we are going to discuss about string interview questions. So let's move to our first question, which is how can you create string in Java? So there are two ways to create string in Java. The first one is using a literal and the second way is using constructor. So let's look at the first way, which is how to create string using literal. So by definition, anything that is specified within double quotes is a string literal. So to create a string literal, you have to specify your text within double quotes. Now let's look at this practically. So what I'll do, I'll try to create string str1 equal to within double quotes, hello and semicolon. So this is my string literal. One thing to keep in mind, all the string literals are created in string pool. So there is something called as heap memory, which is in your RAM. And within heap memory, there is a portion known as string pool. So whenever I create a literal, it gets created in my string pool. So after executing this line, line number four, one object will be created in my string pool. Hello, without the double quotes. So that is about the literal. So there is one more way to create string, which is using constructor. So let's try to look at uh, that way. So string <coughs> str2 equal to new string. So this is the constructor of a uh, string class. So I'll pass the content of the string here within the double quotes. So hello. So this way we can create a string in Java using constructor. Here I'm using this new keyword to call the constructor. So when this line is executed, line number six, the string which are not literals are created in heap. As we saw, literals are created in string pool. Similarly, the strings which are created using constructor are stored in the heap memory. So after executing line number six, one string object will be created in heap. So it will be something like this. Hello. Okay. So we saw how to create string using literal and how to create string using constructor. Now there will be a follow-up question in your interview where interviewer will ask you after executing line number five, which is this string str2 equal to new string, hello, how many objects will be created? So generally, if you look at this, you will think only one object will be created. But the answer to this uh, question is there will be two objects that will be created. I'll explain you how. The first thing that will happen is uh, when, when the execution environment uh, encounters this, which is in double quotes, hello, it finds this is a literal. So it, it goes and create creates this literal in your string pool like this. And then it creates a new string object in your heap like this. So after execution of line number five, there will be two objects in the memory that will be created. So the answer to this question is two objects will be created in memory after executing line number five. Uh, that's it for this question. Let's move on to the next question. So the next question is, how do you compare two strings in Java? So to compare two strings, there are two ways in Java. One is using equal to equal to operator and one is using equals method. So let's see both of them. So the first one is equal to equal to operator. So when you use this operator, it checks for the references. It does not check for the content. And when you use equals method, it checks for the content of the string. So let's take an example of uh, string one and string two. So I define two strings, one is string one uh, with literal hello and with uh, one, one is string two with literal hello. Now, as we see literals get created in your string pool. So literal got created, but you created two string. Still, there is only one object because that uh, the content of the object is same. Now, when you try to compare these two objects using equal to equal to operator, it will return true because str1 and str2 are pointing to the same string literal. So let's see this in action. I'll go to my Eclipse editor. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll try to create two string. One is uh, string str1 equal to <coughs> hello. So this is my first literal string str2 equal to hello. This is my second literal. Now, what I'll do, I'll try to print, uh, I'll try to compare these two strings using equal to equal to operator. So I'll do str1 equal to equal to str2. As we saw in the diagram, 
uh, as the content is same and both are literal. So they, these both references are pointing to the same string and hence this statement should return true because this operator checks for the references. Now let's try to save this. I'll run this program. And as you can see, it returns true. So whenever interviewer asks you how to compare references uh, to the string, we do compare the references using equal to equal to operator. Uh, let's now move on to the second way of comparison, which is using equals method. <coughs> so equals um, gets into the content of the string and then checks the content rather than just the references. So here you can see, I create string three and string four and I create new string. So whenever you create new string, the string gets created in the heap. So string three will be entirely new string and string four will be entirely a different string. Uh, now, if we want to compare these two strings, then we have to use equals method. So let's try to go ahead and check how to compare these two using equals method. So I'll create two string using the constructor. Uh, string str3 equal to new string and I'll pass in as hello and I'll create one more string known as uh, string 4 and I'll keep the content as same because we want to check the content. Now I'll do uh, system.out.println and uh, I'll compare string 3 dot equals string 4. Now as we know the content is same of both the string and hence the result should be true. Let me close this. Uh, I'll save and I'll try to run. So the content is same and hence the answer is true. So there are two ways uh, you can tell to the interview. One is using equal to equal to operator and the other one is using equals method. Now we saw equal to equal to just compares the references and equals method compares your content. That's it for this question. Let's move on to the next question, which is how do you concatenate strings efficiently? As we know, string is immutable. So whenever you try to change any content of the string, a new string object is created. So if you change uh, the string a lot of times, so that many objects will be created in memory. And hence, that is not the efficient way to concatenate string. So let's now see practically how to concatenate string efficiently. So I'll go to my Eclipse editor and uh, so to concatenate uh, your string, we use string builder. So let's try to create a string builder, str builder equal to new string builder. Now string builder is not immutable. It is mutable, mutable in the sense it changes the same object and it does not create a new object. So whenever I want to append something to the existing string, it will just take that new string and concatenate uh, to the same object. So let's try to do that. I'll name this as SB instead of uh, string builder so to keep it simple. Uh, SB dot append. So that is append overloaded method. You can pass all the data types, Boolean character uh, end. So I'll do uh, append and uh, I'll pass hello. Then I'll do append and I'll pass uh, space and then I'll do append and I'll pass void. Once I do uh, concatenating all the string objects, then I'll take uh, the final result into the string, string final str equal to, what I'll do, I'll do sb.toString. So whatever is the result in, in string buffer or uh, in string, string builder, I'll get that result in my final string. So to string right and let me print this uh, i'll do uh, sys out system dot out dot println and i'll print final str so this holds the final result which is hello space one or uh, let me save this and uh, let me run this as you see uh, hello space one so this is the efficient way to concatenate your string in java Oh, well, that's it for this question. Let's move on to the next question. So the next question is, how can you convert a string to uppercase and lowercase? So given a string, you have to convert the same string to uppercase and to lowercase. So this is a simple one. Uh, there are inbuilt methods in string to do this operation. Uh, let's go and check that out. Mm -hmm. What I'll do, I'll create a string str equal to uh, new 
string and i'll try to pass on hello world now uh, what i'll do mm, string lowercase i want to convert this string to lowercase str dot to lowercase so there is an inbuilt method and uh, i'll do string uppercase equal to str dot to uppercase so these are two inbuilt methods uh it's a very uh, simple one so let's try to uh print the lowercase um of this string which is lowercase and uppercase of this string which is in this variable uppercase oh let me just uh, save this and uh, let me run this when i run this you can see hello world which is in lowercase and hello world which is in uppercase uh, that's it for this question let's move on to the next question so the next question is what is the difference between string string builder and string buffer so this is a very common question and it often gets asked uh, for entry level uh, people in java so here you can see string is immutable immutable is uh, when you create any object and the content of that object cannot be changed that is known as immutable so string is immutable if you try to change uh, the content of uh, the string object a new string object will be created so in any case you will never be able to change the existing object so it is immutable meaning the content cannot be changed after creation once you create the object that content is final you cannot change it in string builder string builder and string buffer both are mutable that means whenever you make changes to the content it gets reflected in the same object so with every change new object is not created uh, as like string um, there is a subtle difference between string builder and string buffer string builder is not thread self and string buffer is thread self so if you are dealing with only one thread then you can safely use string builder but if you are dealing in multi-threaded environment then you have to use string buffer so that's it for this question let's move on to the next question so the next question is um, what is substring method and can you practically show me how substring works uh, let's go ahead and uh, check this mm. so i created one original string and this time i'm going to keep the content as hello world uh, and I want to get the substring of this uh, original string. So let's try to get the substring. So as far as out and uh, original. So there is a method, inbuilt method for getting the substring. Substring is just a part of your string. So substring and I provide an index. So uh, the, the, in, the index in string always starts with zero. So h is at zero, e is at uh, one, ed is at two. So index starts with zero. So if I provide index as two, well, let's try to save this and run this. As you can see, zero, one, and two. So from second index, all the letters till the end got printed. Now, in this case, you can see the index that we specify, the character at that index is also included in the final result. Now, if I want to print uh, only the world part, then what I'll do? Uh, zero eighth index, first index, second index, third index, fourth index. Uh, from fifth, I want to print. So what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and type five. So let's just save it and uh, print. So you can see the world is printed. So if I want to extract only the world part, then I have to do substring five because starting from fifth index till the end, I want to print the string. So that is how substring works. That's it for this question. Let's move on to the next question. So the next question is, uh, will you be able to find if there is any specific text present in the string? So consider there's a text, hello world, and I want to find if hello is present in the text. So let's go and check. There is a contents method which can help us find this. Um, so this is original string and there is hello world. That is the original content of the string. Now, I just want to check uh, sys out. I want to find if hello is present in this string what i'll do original dot contains the contains in the contains you can provide the string that you want to find in the original string now i want to find if hello is present so let's go ahead and execute this uh, program save this execute this and it returns true because hello is already present in the text let's try to find if world is present i'll save this and i'll run this 
yeah world is also present let's try to find if happy is present in the above string and happy is not present so oh, this should give us false yeah it gave us false but that is how contents work so that's it for this video thank you guys for joining